morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome to Spooky. I'm Talking Waffles. I'm your host, Ileana. So happy Halloween to those of you who celebrate Halloween. I'm very excited because this episode is actually on Halloween. And as somebody who wasn't allowed to celebrate Halloween as like a kid, I'm like obsessed with Halloween now as an adult. <laughs> like, I feel like that's just the way it goes. But anyways, so this is the final Halloween themed episode for the month. And then we'll be going back to the regular scheduled content. And yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. So today, uh, last week, basically, I talked about the history of Halloween. And I got a lot of positive feedback from you and all this nice stuff like, wow, this is super cool. And one comment about me not knowing Roman numerals, but honestly fair. And so I was like, okay, let's end this off with a bang. Let's do another history episode because I love history. And a lot of the holidays that we have, like Halloween or Christmas, they're so rich in history. And I just, ah, so good. I even have like a, a this day in history calendar. So every single day I get a new history fact. And then like uh, the next day, like I rip off the page and then I have another one. And yeah, I I'm a history nerd. I, I used to get made fun of when I was a kid. People saying like, ew, why do you like history? Like that's so lame. That's so boring. I'm like, Mm, I like it. And so yes, today we are going to be talking about the history of the jack-o'-lanterns. And so without further ado, let's jump into this week's episode. So shout out to history.com for providing me with some great guide and insight on this week's episode and last week's episode. Not sponsored though, but there is a sponsored segment somewhere. I don't know where it appears, but it's there somewhere in my episodes. So during Halloween, there are pumpkins with faces, usually pretty scary faces, carved into them and they're lit up with candles. And so the practice of this actually originated in Ireland and it wasn't pumpkins, it was actually turnips that they used before. And some people also use potatoes. And so essentially the name Jack O'Lantern, Jack O'Lantern, comes from an Irish folktale man about a man named Stingy Jack. And so Irish immigrants brought this tradition to America, home of the pumpkin, and that's kind of how it became really integral to Halloween festivals. So we're going to talk about the story of Stingy Jack or the legend of Stingy Jack. And this is one of my favorite Halloween like history stories. So as we all know, people have been making jack-o'-lanterns at Halloween for centuries. And this originated because of a man named Stingy Jack. And so according to the story, Stingy Jack invited the devil to have a drink with him. And true to his name, Stingy Jack really didn't want to pay for his drink. So he basically convinced the devil to turn himself into a coin so Jack could basically buy them their drinks. And the devil's like, mm, yeah, that sounds reasonable to me. And so the devil transformed himself into a coin. And Jack decided that it would be a great idea to keep the money and put it into his pocket. The money obviously being like the devil. And so he puts the devil, which is currently a coin, into his pocket next to a silver cross. And so this makes it impossible for the devil to change back into his original form. Obviously, he's not happy about that. And so Jack eventually frees the devil, but only under the condition that he wouldn't bother Jack for a year and that when the time comes for Jack to die, that the devil would not claim his soul. And so the next year, Jack, like the devil was like, okay, it's time to get Jack. But Jack actually tricks the devil into climbing a tree to pick like a piece of fruit. And while the devil is in the tree, Jack like carves the sign of a cross into the tree's bark. So obviously the devil can't come down. And so the devil and Jack basically made a deal. And he's like, uh, you can't bother me for 10 more years and I will let you free. And the devil's like, okay. And so he does that. Time goes by. It's unspecified the amount of time, but it has to be 10 years or more, I'm assuming. And Jack dies. And so as the legend goes, Jack kind of floats on up and he's in heaven and God's like, uh-uh, you're unsavory. We don't want you like in heaven. You're not welcome here. And obviously the devil is super upset by the tricks that Jack has played on him and the devil being who he is, like he does keep his word to not claim Jack's soul. But this means that Jack can't go to hell and he can't go to heaven. And so the devil basically just sends Jack off into the night with only like a burning piece of coal to light his way. 
and Jack puts this coal into a carved out turnip and they say that he's been roaming around the earth ever since. And so this Irish tale basically created the ghostly figure of Jack of the Lantern, which then simply just became like Jack-o'-lantern. And so in Ireland and Scotland, people actually started to make their own versions of like Jack's lanterns by carving scary faces into turnips or potatoes and placing them into the windows and near the doors to frighten away stingy Jack and other wandering evil spirits. And in England, they actually used large beets and immigrants from these country brought the jack-o'-lantern tradition with them when they came to the United States. They found the pumpkin, which is very native to America. And they're like, you know what? This is actually perfect to carve these jack-o'-lanterns. So they carved it and that's the origin of the pumpkin. And I think that it's so fascinating. And I just, it's just such a fun story. Like it must be embarrassing for the devil in this story. Cause like <laughs> this poor, poor man, uh, if you can see the devil as like a poor man, but like he got tricked so many times. You think he would learn right from the first time. And then like the second time it's like, you know what? Don't trust Jack. So we do have some time. And so I found this cool article called how Americans became convinced their Halloween candy was poisoned. And you may see a lot of posts. There's a meme going around right now in 2022 where it's like, make sure you check your ha- your kid's Halloween candy because there's, and then there's just like some ridiculous thing that obviously can't fit in candy, like the galaxy or a bunch of people. I don't know. Like, it's just like a bunch of random stuff. And so it's a really, really common occurrence at Halloween for people to be like, make sure you check your candy. Like you don't want it to be poisoned or full of razor blades or anything like that. And so I thought I would share what I just learned Uh, with you about like how this kind of happened. So the paranoia for tainted candy spiked in the early 1980s after a rash of Tylenol poisoning in which cyanide lace and uh, I'm not even going to pronounce that properly. A centenomophen I am so sorry, uh, was basically placed on store shelves and sold. And so this high profile crime led to the introduction of child proof containers and through federal laws, it basically aimed at punishing those who tamper with drugs. And so after all these Tylenol murders, which by the way, are still unsolved, unfortunately, warnings about altered Halloween candy increased. So while the fears may be overblown, there actually is some evidence of Halloween crimes involving poison in the past. So for example, in 1964, which is when Jeffrey Bezos was born, a New York woman named Helen Pethy was arrested for handing out things like ant poison and dog biscuits to kids. And when she was questioned, the housewife basically said that she was joking and that she gave the items to kids she felt were old enough, like too old to be trick-or-treating basically. And luckily, no kids were poisoned during, like, any of that. But law enforcement's like, yeah, that's not funny. Don't do that. However, the most infamous poisoning took place in 1974. And that was when a Texas man named Ronald O'Brien gave cyanide-laced pixie sticks to five children, including his son. And none of the other children ate the candy, but his eight-year-old son, Timothy, did and died soon after. And... Nobody saw him put the cyanide in the candy and investigators learned that he'd recently taken out like a life insurance policy out on all of his kids. And so that basically instantly convicted him of murder and he was executed with lethal injection in 1984. And of course, decades since the crime, the Candyman murder still looms large in like the memories of a lot of parents on Halloween. And last but not least, in the 1980s, there was a crime ring called Mystery Man with 21 Faces, and they basically blackmailed Japanese candy companies with threats that they would lace their candy with cyanide if they didn't basically pay them a very large ransom. And so at first, it seemed like just a threat, but the stores still pulled a large amount of candy from the store shelves, only to find that none of it was actually poisoned. A couple of months later, the blackmailers actually reached out again, and it turns out that there were packs of cookies and candies laced with cyanide that were discovered on store shelves in central Japan. Luckily, like, nobody died from the poison, but the chief of the Shinga Prefecture Police Department um, eventually uh, killed himself because of his failure to stop the crime run. Actually, nobody has ever found out who committed these, like, Japanese candy crimes, and there have been over 125,000 investigations by Japanese police. 
So I hope you enjoyed the Halloween series for this year. Obviously, I have been doing this since last year and this year as well. So it's going to be a reoccurring theme throughout the I'm Talking Waffles. But this is the final episode of Halloween themed episodes for the year. So I hope you had a lot of fun. I hope you learned a lot of stuff. I hope you just had a great time overall. And I hope that you have a great Halloween. So with that, it is now time for everybody's favorite part of the show. That's right. It's the fun fact of the day. So today's fun fact is... Dun, da, da. The name Jack was the original John Doe. So that's why we have Jack of all trades, Stingy Jack. Yeah, so I thought that was super interesting about the Jack then. Um, but now it's John. Everything's a John. It's like a John Doe, but it used to be a Jack. And so I thought that was pretty interesting. I don't know wh- why we got rid of Jack. I like Jack better than John, to be honest. So yeah, with that, I'm going to bid you a great rest of your morning, a great rest of your evening, a great rest of your night, a great rest of your apocalypse, and a great rest of your Halloween if you celebrate. I hope you have a spooky day, and I will see you next Monday.